Hello everyone, I am Arush Bukhari, I am lead teacher of Playgrove and Prison Montessori School. In my today's video, I am going to discuss and reflect upon effective teaching and learning strategies and practices in my preschool classroom setup. Though there are a lot of approaches towards the learning and teaching, including um, developing the communication skills, uh, social skills, and uh, the self management skills of the children. Um, fostering the project-based learning, employee-based learning, and uh, focusing on uh, collaborative and teamwork. Um, it also may include uh, uh, planning for the effective uh, teaching and uh, learnings, and uh, uh, promoting the active, uh, you know, active learning in the classroom, uh, as well as promoting the bilingual uh, learners in our classroom. But in my today's video, I am going to specifically focus on creating a positive classroom environment. Joining me today, my very competent and experienced colleague, Ms. Yamena, and she is going to share her own experiences and practices in a classroom environment. So my name is Yamina and I'm also a lead teacher here in Crescent Montessori and we both lead the age group of uh, four, three to five years over the young learners and uh, today we are here to discuss about the effective strategies which we can implement in our classroom for the positive learning environment or for the environment which is conducive to learning and help kids to uh, develop a, rapid, a good rapport with their teachers, with their uh, peers, with their parents. Yes. Practices to create a positive learning environment in the classroom, then uh, the first very important aspect is uh, building a positive communication and connection with the children. Uh, positive communication through encouraging the children, encouraging the children to uh, convey their own thoughts, to say, uh, to communicate, to talk about what they want to do. Uh, to reflect on their uh, learning, to um, uh, talk about the different learning activities and their own choices. One-to-one uh, -one connection is very much important in building a positive relationship between the teacher and the student. Because in my viewpoint, if the teacher and student have a strong connection and bonding, then the classroom environment becomes very much friendly and very much comfortable uh, for the young learners because uh, the age group which we are dealing the children are too young like they it's it's a uh, milestone of their, of their life to uh, you know handle the new environment and to deal with the different people coming up with the different backgrounds uh, for them they, the, uh, their friends their class fellows are strangers so in order to have a peer interaction and a positive interaction between the, all the students and between the teacher and the student uh, is very much helpful to, to create a positive learning environment in my classroom. If I talk about the healthy discussions, then it is very much important that if we are going to introduce something new and if we are going to initiate any project work in the classroom, then we must uh, start with the, um, I normally, I normally prefer to start with the brainstorming and I normally uh, prefer to start with the, the prior knowledge uh, to build the schemas on the prior knowledge of the children. I ask them what do they already know about it. Like suppose if uh, like uh, uh, the project which we have uh, initiated in the last week that is the, the community cases and the community helpers. So first I ask them if they have been to any community place like uh, the examples I want them to give the examples like suppose I given uh, I started my talk, uh, discussion with the uh, with my personal experience that I have been visiting a bank uh, a day before yesterday and then I asked my children I encouraged them to come up with their own experiences that what the many places they have visited in the last few days so this is the way how we uh, encourage our students to communicate, to talk about their personal experiences and to have a positive communication and interaction in the classroom. Uh, it's, 
it is very important to have you know a connection between uh, not only the teacher and student but also between the uh, the peer interaction is also very important so what about you okay so uh, i am very much happy to see these strategies that you are going on with this all uh, so the strategies like the first strategy which comes to my mind and which i implement in my classroom is the one to one connection or one to one um relationship with the students like it's very much important first you need to establish a good again i would say again rapport with the children if they are comfortable with you they can come up with their ideas they can share their problems they can share their likes and dislikes which is eventually going to help you activate learning intelligence in your classroom okay if the, for instance if they have voice choice and want to share the thing which we are doing in the ide system so if they have this opportunity they will let you know that either they are uh, comprehending the things which you are trying to make them absorb and if they are not comfortable with those things if they are not able to comprehend those stuff then they have this choice they can come up they can tell us so we can eventually change our strategy that this is how this is not the learning style which he is he or she is comfortable with we need to switch it somehow he would be able to understand this thing and another strategy which i have seen which is very effective in my classroom is is of uh, mixed ability groups because uh, when you need to establish a positive environment in your classroom you need to take care of every child you need to take care you need to cater the needs their individual needs some of them they gonna come up they gonna tell you some of them they just gonna sit there you need to understand basically i need to understand like either the child is what happened what's the matter why the child is not participating or why the child is not there so i need to understand this thing for this purpose the mixed ability group uh, opportunity or the planning is very much effective when kids kids if they feel any hesitation while talking to their teacher first of all i need to have this kind of relationship with my child they don't feel any hesitation but still it happens because they are very young they are 3 to 4 years old and sometimes when you are they are sitting and you are standing it also causes a fear to them so when they sit with their friend with any of their uh, classmate they are going to be more comfortable they are going to come up with a more open idea they are going to be uh, more activated in their learning process and the um, collaboration yes i have seen in your classes i have seriously i have seen these lessons in your classroom i i do have an experience with you when i first joined this school i had an opportunity to see your class and i saw that i was very happy and i learned a lot that day that this is how i need to take care of my teaching practices i need to give my child that autonomy which was present in your class and i was very happy to see that and um, uh, because we uh, you know uh, even when we plan for a lesson uh, and when we go for effective planning uh, so we sit together because in our school uh, we have a culture of collaborative planning for our coordination and uh, when we are uh, planning a unit of inquiry or when we are uh, you know uh, going into the detail of a uh, central idea and when we are uh, you know uh, taking out the line of inquiry from that central idea so we always sit together it's a team work like in our school we have a culture of collaborative planning so that's where uh, that's very really much helpful for both of us and for the rest of uh, our colleagues for who are dealing the same level that we can reflect on our lesson uh, the previous lesson like uh, if uh, when we uh, initially in the last week when we introduced the community the uh, concept of community case is the first time in our class and then we sit together after the whole week and we reflect that how the lesson went in our classrooms and you know uh, like because every class has a different uh, type of culture because of the many reasons so uh, in few of the classes the lesson went very uh, you know excited but in few of the classes uh, some of our colleagues need to work uh, upon some areas where they can make the lesson more uh, excited and active so uh, when we plan to, uh, this week a uh, uh, project that is related to the community helpers so it the uh, uh, i will be very blessed that like, i we have i have uh, such a you know cooperative colleagues that we can uh, plan together it's a blessing it's a uh, you know it's really helpful 
to plan together for an effective learning uh, in the coming week. So uh, I guess that this week uh, project which is related to the community campus will be specifically discuss the preparation and uh, um, the chef. Uh, because we want our kids to realize that there are, there is no profession which is higher and there is no profession which is really good and there is no bad profession. It's not like that the doctor is superior or engineer is superior to the chef or a uh, um, beautician. So it went really well because I have that whole mirror and uh, I brought few of my old cosmetics to the classroom and we have a whole play area in our classroom. So it went quite well in my classroom. My or the many of my girls and even few of my boys. They are very much excited to become a hairdresser or to open a salon uh, of their own. So how it went in your classroom? It was very fun activity in my classroom as well. Like kids were very much happy. They they developed their skills. They understood that okay, oh, fine. If I don't get a job of a doctor or an engineer, I can be a hairdresser. Mm -hmm. And they were they were coming up with a very innovative idea. Exactly. I was amazed to see the kind of nail art they produced. Even the guys, yes. they decorated the nails so well. Like I, I really wanted to put them on my face yeah. and have fun with that. And the kind of um, hair cutting they were giving yeah. to the visitor friends, although they were the best. Yes, I, uh, I made a you know the the braids, the the braids paper. Yes, they were there. So they just cut them. They give them beautiful haircuts. Enjoy it and the audience. And the one thing which I felt that it's it's a very good initiative to introduce. Kind of uh, professions in your uh, city because um, not every child is same. Mm -hmm. Every it's child same. is coming from a different background. Every child has different interests. Every child is observing something different. And this is how if we keep exploring the things and if we keep them, if we keep giving them opportunities in which they can infer, they mm -hmm. can relate their experience or their knowledge to the present knowledge which is activated mm -hmm. in the classroom, they can learn it to better way. So they are more active in the classroom, they are not passive anymore. Yes. So this liberty needs to be there and I am very happy to see that we are practicing this thing mm -hmm. and I have seen this thing again in your class, that autonomy, that learner autonomy, that is always there in your classroom and your class, it, it looks like a, a fun place to come and visit and And this bring. is what we are striving for in which we are uh, trying to make it more uh, a fun filled environment to create a positive fun filled environment for the children so that they can happily come to the school. Yes. I have one question for you. How do you activate uh, this active learning in your classroom? How do you make sure that the learning stations are active or the active learning is going on? Yes, uh, I have different strategies for that. First of all, I keep on changing my furniture. I never, uh, you know, stayed for the months and months. Sometimes my, uh, you know, uh, the uh, big table, the big round table for the written class is on the right side and maybe I move it to the left side uh, besides the carpet. But, uh, I keep on moving my furniture as well as I strongly believe in the, you know, the grouping and regrouping uh, strategies. And uh, it's, it can be on intro space, it can be on um, the same task, the students who are who want to do the same task again to, to join in a group. It can be uh, again the ability to mix ability groups. And sometimes I intentionally create a group in which I you know uh, 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 those students who are very much communicative, very much talkative, and those who are you know very yes uh, less participative. So yes, so uh, this strategy is very really helpful. And again, I always try to bring some. You know something new for the for uh, uh, for uh, provoking them or to, for making the inquiry based learning alive. I brought something from my home, like uh, in uh, two weeks back, I brought an old radio from my house and I put it in my class. And the most of the students in the morning they just have a first glance on that and they were, they were unable to relate to what is it and they were very much curious and they were. So these, yes, they become inquisitive. So the, these are the different strategies which I uh, keep on um, changing and keep on adapting for having an active learning stations in my classroom and active learning. So it's like classroom. if you do give this ability to your child that they have some yes. opportunity to regroup themselves. To regroup themselves according to their own choice, according to their comfort level and uh, <coughs> according to the uh, task which we have with the child. So very good thing if, if you are 
giving this opportunity to your kids, it's, it's a very good because obviously they are going to make many friends this way and they are going to be more comfortable with their classroom environment. Then the first come is creating a learning community while keeping the parents on the board on the same page. Because um, now the challenge, the biggest challenge I face is uh, my parents are not that much supportive because they don't understand and um, they don't understand the importance of project-based learning and their input and their cooperation which we require uh, for uh, making the children more active towards the quality-based learning. Because uh, the parents sometimes they are not familiar with the uh, terms creating the self-efficacy and promoting the agency because they are not familiar uh, with these concepts so they don't cooperate with us.
possibility. Like for instance, we, I being a communicative language teacher, I prefer my approach to be communicative. But exactly, when they don't understand the instruction and the point starts, then what I have to do is I have to switch my methodology. I tell myself to TPR, I start using my body, mm-hmm. and then I prompt the thing so then they can understand and comprehend the instructions and do the things accordingly. Mm-hmm. So yes, it's a big challenge, but, but it's a fun. We enjoy working with kids. Thank you so much, Sharna, and thank you so much. Thank you so much for everybody having me.